Hello, this is Brett Birschbach, Lead Adobe Marketing Cloud Architect and Technical Director at Bounteous. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the ACS AEM Commons feature, Remote Assets. This is the same Remote Assets feature that was demonstrated at the 2018 Adobe uh, Summit AEM Rockstar event, as well as later in the year at 2018 Adobe Immerse Developer Webinar. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. On my local computer here, I've got an AEM server instance running on localhost 4502. It happens to be AEM 6.4, though this feature also is supported on AEM 6.3. Um, installed on this AEM 6.4 server, I have the ACS AEM Commons package, and I've also configured the remote assets feature. Also behind the scenes, I've got another AEM server running. That server has absolutely nothing installed to it. It's just a simply an AEM out of the box uh, server. And it is serving as my remote assets uh, dam, whether that would be a dedicated AEM assets dam or whether that would be um, a dev or QA or stage server from which I'm looking to pull the assets I need to my local environment as I'm either developing or otherwise working in that environment. Um, on the left hand browser here I am logged in as an administrator user and then on the right hand side uh, a little bit later we'll be logged in as an author to see how this feature works for the end users. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating with the We Retail site. Um, if you're familiar with the latest versions of AEM you should certainly be familiar with the We Retail demo site and that's what we're going to be experimenting with. Um, as I take a look on my local server, as we get going here on the demo, you'll see that I've got no Wii Retail uh, assets. Normally you would have the Wii Retail Assets folder and you'd also have a Wii Retail Tags folder. Um, those are not present because that's what I'm going to be demonstrating with. So I have, uh, before the demo, configured remote assets to sync in the Wii Retail Tags and Assets, um, and now I need to initiate those syncs. So, when you want to sync assets, there's two ways of doing it. You can either have an admin schedule a regular synchronization of those tags and assets, or you can go ahead and trigger it manually. And for sake of the demo today, I'm going to trigger it manually through this Felix console that um, the admin has access to. So if I go ahead and kick that off, that'll take a few seconds. And as that's going, uh, what's happening here is that we are now synchronizing. First off, we're syncing, synchronizing over the tags that I've configured. Not super super exciting, but it's important because if we want the assets that we synchronize in to maintain their tags, we need to have the tags in the local environment. Secondly, what's quite obviously more uh, exciting and important is that we are bringing over the assets. So I've configured the uh, remote assets feature to point at certain folders in the remote DAM, and what's happening in this node sync is it's synchronizing that entire set of nodes, that entire tree, um, over to my local server. So it's pulling in all of the uh, metadata such as title or file size, um, all those types of things that you would use if you were searching for assets or otherwise using assets in AEM. It's pulling in all those properties, but what it's not pulling in, and very important to understand, is it's not pulling in the big binary files that are associated with those assets. So for instance, let's say my remote dam has a lot of print quality JPEGs or TIFF files or InDesign files, PSDs, you know, these types of files could be multiple megabytes, if not even gigabytes in size. And as we're pulling them to my local instance, what's happening here is we're actually not bringing over those binary files, but instead we're replacing those with much, much smaller temporary assets. And this, what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to synchronize in all of the assets and their metadata so that I can use the ones that I need to use but it's going to be at a fraction of the disk space because it's not going to bring in all those binaries that I don't need. Now eventually we will need some binaries, but the key is, is we only want to bring in the binaries for the assets that we actually are using so that we can maintain the DAM on the local server at a much smaller size, maybe 5-10% or even smaller than that remote uh, DAM size is. So as I've been jabbering away here, this actually finished quite a while ago, so let's take a look at what we have. First off, if I go ahead and refresh the tag screen, we can see we have synchronized in all of the Wii Retail tags. Again, not too exciting, but important if we want to maintain tags on the assets that we're syncing in. Uh, a lot more exciting, of course, is the fact that we now have the Wii Retail folder of assets. And if I dig into this, we can see all of the folder structure is now here. And if I dig all the way down into a folder that has assets, we can see we've got 
the full set of assets. So this biking folder has eight assets in it. We can see all the assets have their metadata, such as their title and when they were created and, and their size. And so for instance, like this asset here says it's 610 kilobytes size. That's actually the size of the asset on the remote server, not here. It's actually smaller here because we've got these temporary small um, images in place. And so, you know, in the case of 600 kilobytes, probably not a big deal, you know, saving a, a few kilobytes. But let's say this was 600 megabytes. Uh, obviously, that's a big deal. We don't, we, you know, a lot of the reasons why we don't just package up the entire DAM from the remote server and drop it onto this server as a content package is that we don't have the same disk space available. Um, so, but as I mentioned before, you know, as a user, though, and if we're going to actually use this in our websites, we do need binaries for assets that we want to use. So let's see how that actually works. On the right hand side I'm going to log in as the author user and let's go ahead and take a look at the same folder in the DAM that we're viewing as the admin user. So what you'll notice is the biking folder is still opened up relatively quickly um, but we'll also notice that we now have the real assets. So what happened there? How, how were we able to get these assets? Well what happened was AEM realized that when I, as a non-admin user, was requesting assets, some of those assets, in this case all of the assets in this folder, were remote assets. And therefore it needed to, just in time, as my request was processing, go to that remote server, grab those binary files, get them in place, and then finish serving up my request. Now I, as the author user, have no idea that this actually took place behind the scene other than a little bit of delay on that first load, but now that these assets are in AEM, they are now fully fledged real assets and there's no longer that slight uh, performance penalty. And if I go over here on the left hand side, refresh, we can see that as an admin user I now see those assets here. But very importantly, if I go to let's say the hiking folder, all of those assets are still not synced because they have not been used by any real users to date. So this allows us to have all these assets in from the remote DAM, but only the binaries for the ones that we particularly want. Now another action that an author might do is let's say I go back up to the top level assets. Let's say I search for these uh, bounteous assets that I've sprinkled in for purpose of demo. As you can see, I do get all of the results, and again, they all show up with their binaries because, again, AEM detected that somebody was requesting these assets that were remote assets, and it needed to go get the binaries just in time so that they were there. And again, as the author user, I am none the wiser that these weren't always there in the first place. And if I look on the left-hand side, if I refresh my hiking folder here, we can see just the assets that I have requested as the author, nothing more. So even though all these assets live in folders alongside other assets, because those assets were not actually used, uh, those assets had no reason to be pulled in and therefore continue to remain as remote and continue to remain as small uh, as possible with the temporary binary. So very cool feature um, to allow us to have all of the assets that we need. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at how this would work on a website if you were simply traversing a website. So again, as the admin user, uh, these assets don't synchronize automatically. So if I view the page, you know, we do see a couple assets. These are the ones that we had synced in in the folders, I think the biking folder that we were that we were in and playing around with. But you can see the rest of these are still in their temporary state. And if, we, if I refresh this page, um, it's not going to be any different. I still just see those temporary binaries. So it's not anything happening over here on the left side, what's happening though is if as a real user I go ahead and access that, that page, then it's going to take just a little bit longer than normal the first time it's loading because behind the scenes all of these assets were synchronized in, the binary files were synchronized in just in time, and I see the full page with all the assets and uh, none of the temporary binaries. Uh, you know, If I go ahead and refresh the page as the admin, Again, we'll see that they are now all here. And from this point forward, there's no longer a performance penalty because these assets are now real assets. And again, it's only pulling the assets that I need on this site, which are often spread throughout the DAM. Your DAM is often not organized the same way as your websites are. And if you were to try to synchronize in all these assets by hand, you'd have to go pick and choose and find them in all the different folders. With remote assets, you don't need to actually do that. And then finally, one last thing to demonstrate is let's go ahead and take a look again at another folder of assets 
that um, hasn't yet been synchronized. Let's take a look at these water sports. So again, these assets, you know, are not synchronized. If I refresh the page a few times, I can show that they're they're definitely not synchronized. If I go ahead and switch into authoring mode here. And I'm going to pop open the asset finder on the left hand side. And let's say I go ahead and search for swimming images. Those images are going to pop up and again they pop up with their assets and now they are synced. So again a lot of this is the same thing over and over again. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that it doesn't really matter what the author is doing, so whether they're searching through a, a damn asset search or through the asset finder here or traversing a website. It wouldn't even have to be a logged in user if you were on a non-author. If you were on a published server, it would work the same way. Um, as those assets are requested, however they are requested, they will be synchronized in by AEM because AEM will notice that they are remote assets. So a uh, very cool feature. This will allow you to have your local instance pull in all the uh, images that your site needs. No more developing on a site that doesn't have images anymore. Uh, I know I've done that quite a bit myself. So uh, this kind of concludes the demo. Um, but if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, again, my name is Brett Birschbach. You can reach me at brett.birschbach at bounteous.com. Would happy be would be happy to help you with any questions you have on the feature.